What's up guys? Welcome to Goo Talks Lucky Number 7. Today is Wednesday, I believe. No, it's Thursday, September September 6th. I totally know these things. I totally know what day it is. Uh, I want to thank you guys for joining us here. If this is your first time here, Goo Talks is where I sit here and answer your questions, but more importantly, talk about the things that are pressing in my mind, such as, uh, well, lots of times you guys want to know about the friend zone. Sometimes we talk about business, sometimes we talk about content marketing. Um, today, I guess, we will talk about the idea of giving before you receive. I had a little success earlier that I am very excited about. Earlier in the day, I emailed a company and I said, hey, I like what you guys are doing and I want to make a video review about your product. And we've done reviews for, you know, different products and I, I sent them some links and I said, would you guys would you, <laughs> and I also mentioned that we talked about their competitors' products because I, uh, you know, I wanted to kind of, you know, if you're trying to get a girl jealous, you know, you, you mentioned a little bit about how you're gonna like go out with a friend. <laughs> um, that's a pretty good strategy of getting girls jealous. So I mentioned that we had uh, talked a lot about their competitors' product, but that their competitors' product in my mind, had been uh, giving us problems. So would they like to give me a review unit of their product in exchange for having a video review, which will be on the channel? And they were like, oh, and, and, oh, here was the best part. I mentioned to them that I wanted to join their affiliate program and that the video review would have both the, their logo of the company as well as the affiliate link. So they went, um, they were like, okay, sure, fill out the affiliate application and then tomorrow we will send you a review unit of the product. And I was like, yes! So let's think a little bit about why this worked. I, in my mind, I offered to give them something, which is a video review of the product, before I asked them for anything. I didn't say, hey, why don't you give me a review product? Or I, I, didn't, I didn't ask them for like a free unit. I told them, look, like, this is what I will do for you before asking them to do anything for me. And I find that in in, in life, it, there's like a, a balance, right? You have the balance of karma and the universe. Whatever is, whatever you're putting in, you are going to pull out. It's just, it's like the law of the universe. So, and hey, as Vegaman004 says, that's what you tell hookers. Look at, look at hookers, right? Hookers give to receive. They don't say, hey, give me the money first. They say, hey, what can I do for you, lonely young gentleman? How can I make your night better? Do you want to have some fun? Not, do you want to give me money? So, balance. So we'll see what happens when this product comes in. I am super excited to do this review. So anyways, let's see, what's going, what else is going on today, guys? Um, today was a very cool day. I got to have some Korean barbecue with my good buddy Kugi from Broken Tear. He, <laughs> we sat around and we thought about we talked about all the problems with Broken Tear and all the problems in Cross Counter TV. And then we kind of had some coffee 
and the coffee was really good. Um, but it was good catching up with you, Kugi, wherever you are. Um, we may be, hmm, there may be a photo shoot tomorrow, and there may be, I think there's a Persona tournament on Saturday at Super Arcade. Uh, what kind of coffee? Vietnamese coffee. This was Orange County, man. Orange County, the land of <laughs> Vietnamese women. <laughs> oh, it's crazy. Um, Parukia says, Gutex, do you ever plan on inviting John D for the show? I actually don't really plan on inviting anybody for the show because I like the idea of me just being able to sit here and talk with you guys. I actually, you know, actually, it's funny. I was talking with Kugi earlier about the idea of doing a business of FGC, FGC show where we would talk about business. It wouldn't be on this show, you know. It would just be like me and Paul will we'll just, you know, sit down, shoot the shit, and talk about the business aspect of the FGC. Would that be interesting to the current audience of Stream Monsters? Waiting, waiting for a response. Not really. I got to uh, thank you, the unlimited genius. Not really. Got to be real. No problem. Hey, you know, it's not for everybody, bro. Not interested in the hustle. Cover your ears. Uh, probably not. Probably, I'd be down. Why is the camera so close? Yes, yes. Broken Tyranny needs more content. Yes. Logistics. This is what, this is one of the things that we were talking about. Uh, you know, it was interesting when, when Paul was saying that, you know, he wanted to create content, but he didn't really know. We talked a lot about the idea of creating content for beginners. Because, you know, I had uh, a buddy of mine, uh, Dominic, over, and, you know, he is not a... He's not a Street Fighter player, right? Like, he, you know, he's a DJ, promoter, or writer for Nuestra. And, but he has a he has a very casual interest in you know what what we do here at Cross Counter TV you know uh, as well as you know I have an interest in learning how to DJ he has an interest in you know learning the basics of playing Street Fighter so we're hanging out the other night and you know he's like let's you know let's get on the sticks you know let's play and I'm like okay Dom like if you want to play we can play and you know he doesn't really know how to play he's a casual extremely casual player that you you know used to play like back in the 90s. So we're playing, and you know I, you know I'm beating him. Uh, you know whatever. Like he doesn't really know how to play. He's jumping in, hitting a bunch of buttons, just like going nuts. I'm like, no, Tom, hold on. You know, less is more. You know, you don't want to be jumping so much. It's all about space control, not uh, not the amount of buttons that you can press. So why don't we do this? Why don't we jump online and we'll just switch off rounds? I'll play the first round, you play the second round, and we'll just switch off. So we did that, and. I would win the first round, and then as he was going through the second round, I would basically explain to him, like, kind of like what was going on from, you know, an experienced player's perspective. Like, for example, uh, he would knock the guy down and then, like, try to attack. And I'd say, well, look, you are literally risking the entire round right here because if he does wake up ultra, wake up super, then you're dead. So you have to respect him and respect that he is not going to do something like wake up uppercut or something because if you block then in theory if you were you know if you had practiced a lot then you could do high damaging combos and then kill him for it so he has to respect you this game is about respect and space control uh, which he found interesting so we kind of spent a lot of time um, playing and I was just kind of like describing everything that was happening to him at a very basic you know very basic level so I guess and it was actually, it was really fun, you know, like, it was fun for me to explain it in a very, in a very basic way so that people who just have a very passing interest and don't know much about fighting games could enjoy it. Um, if they just watched a couple of videos and then they would understand, like, oh, a little bit about what was going on here. So I'm wondering if maybe that might be 
some of the content that I produce. And you know, Paul from Broken Tear was also talking about how he could produce content like that, but is it a good look for you know a company that prides itself on having the top players to be putting out content for beginners? I said, Paul, absolutely. Of course it's good for Broken Tear because what you can do is put together these videos. I'm sure they wouldn't take very long to produce. And then you upload them to the channel and then send all the traffic to the Broken Tier store, man. And then you're just selling all kinds of shirts. Do you guys think that, and I mean, obviously, you know, you guys, maybe, I actually, I don't really know if you guys have like a ton of like actual like playing experience or if you guys are more just like spectators. I don't really know. But do you guys think that you would watch videos of me explaining what was going on in a match, whether it was my match or somebody else's, to like kind of like a very, at a, at a very like basic level. Not talking up, dude, like if you wanna, if you wanna hear somebody talk about frame data and you know, these things, I, I, that's not what I'm talking about here. Um, because that's, that's not my job. That's, that is the job of guys like Ultra Chen or Ryan Hunter, you know, it's not, Hmm. Oh, that guitar says, you already did this with Rose. I'm not, I'm talking even more basic. The more basic, the better. You should do lessons with people and do that thing, that kind of thing during lessons if it's the right level player. Hmm. Pers Suicide says, personally, I would fap to it. Perfect. If you're fapping to it, I'm doing it. <laughs> nah, not Perukia says, like Maximilian basic? No. Even more basic. Troy from Canada Cup says, I was just having the same damn conversation with somebody, not you. With somebody, not you. Hmm. Interesting. Yes, Foot Sweep has it correct. FG's fighting games for dummies, Kappa. Hmm. All right, we'll see. We'll see. Because um, it might be relatively easy to produce like this, maybe, you know? Not Singe125 says, how basic? Like he did a low forward into a fireball? Hmm. It's not that he did low forward into fireball, it's what does he do now that he did low forward into fireball? Or why did he do low forward into fireball? Or why did he choose low forward into fireball as opposed to something else? Something like that. <sighs> Anyways, moving forward. So what else? What else is going? Oh. Got me. Got me. Ah, and we're back. Are we back? We're back. Yes. There we go. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Relax. Relax, guys. Relax. John Von Doom says, Gutex, I went to my local comic shop to see if they wanted to host casuals slash tournaments just as a location and I would handle everything, but he didn't seem interested at all. What did I do wrong? Should I have worn pants? I'm assuming that you wore shorts, otherwise you walked in with your dick hanging out. If you walked in with your dick hanging out, he may have been a little put off by that, you know? Um, but if he, would, if he didn't go for it, man, then take that as some feedback. You didn't fail. There are, there are no failures, only feedback. And your feedback for this one was that possibly this dude is just, he was having a bad day. You could have came in and been like, yo, bro, I wanna bring some hookers and blow and we're gonna, and a DJ, and we're just gonna rock this place and you can have all the cash that we raise. And he'd have been like, um, maybe if you said meth, uh, I'm more of a meth guy, I don't really like cocaine. 
Uh, you know, that could have been one of those things. Another issue could have been maybe they don't have the space. Another issue could have been maybe you didn't convey the idea well. Another thing could have been like, yo, this dude was a, this dude is a, you know, he's a soul caliber guy, you know, and you were in, in here talking about Street Fighter and he was like, get the Street Fighter shit out of here. I don't even want to hear it. So there are a million reasons why it didn't work out. But all you can do is either try again or try somewhere else. But you know, you know that it can be done because you've seen other people do it. We have uh, Level Up at Wednesday Night Fights. You know, you got I Play Winner at Starbase or at uh, Southtown. I mean, there are, there's venues everywhere, man. So don't give up. Beansy2183 says, somebody needs to break down Tekken at its most basic basic. You should play it and have Rip tell you why, you'd suck, why you suck. I'd watch. You know, Beansy, that was one of the things that me and Kugi talked about. Because he was like, I want to learn Tekken. I, there's no resources. And I was like, I don't want to learn Tekken, but there are no resources. No, nah, I'm just kidding. I don't really. I'm uh, Tekken agnostic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lapchi says, when is the next drinking and gaming event? Great question, Lapchi. I don't know. I haven't found a place. So Lapchi from Canada Cup Gaming. Uh, of course, Canada Cup is coming up at the end of next month up in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. He was telling me about how I should set up weekly gatherings, just like I'm telling you guys to do. It's just that uh, weekly gatherings where we would just sit around and play and drink and eat. Not a tournament, nothing, nothing uh, super like intense or competitive. Just dudes sitting around, drinking beer and playing video games. And I'm like, you know what, Lapchi, that's a great idea. I just. I haven't found a place that's close to where I live. So actually, if you guys know of a good place in the LA area where we could bring like, I don't know, half a dozen setups maybe, maybe, um, and you, you guys would just come down and drink and eat and it would be cool. If you guys can think of a place like that, please let me know. Hit me up on Twitter or type it into the chat room. Yes, Troyosaurus says, Beer Fighter Nights, exactly. Uh, the gaming writer says, so like Haunts and I play Winter Cruise Dragon Lounge sessions, yes, a place that would be cool to hang out in and eat and or drink and come down and play games. You guys, you guys have no ideas for me here in the chat room. But that's okay, I will find a place. There's one place in Silver Lake, it's like a sports, sports bar. Um, that could be cool. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's okay. That's all right. Maybe I could, Dash Zero says, maybe I could make a place. There may be something like that coming down the line. <laughs> oh. I'm really gonna have to, I'm really gonna have to hunt around downtown because I want it to be, dude, like, I live downtown, I, I want it to be, near near where i'm at because i don't want it because i want it to be as easy as possible for me right to me yeah maybe i'm going to the wrong places ooh foot sweep says oiwaki in little tokyo 
Dude, you might be onto something. I've been there. That ah, you know what's crazy too is I feel like one of the guys that I went to high school with like owns it or is the manager there now. Huh. Interesting. I guess it would just depend on what their out where their outlets were, maybe. But uh, that could be that could be pretty cool. All right, we'll put one in there for a walk for oil walking. Thank you, thank you, foot sweep. Ah, Trapcom wants to know, what's your favorite porn site, Gooey? My favorite porn site is xart.com. X-art.com. I probably should have signed up for the affiliate program <laughs> before I did this because I should have anticipated. I should have anticipated that you, Trapcom, would ask me what my favorite porn site was. But it's okay. Hey, they can just have the free traffic for being awesome. You know what I like about XArt? This is porn that you could watch with your girlfriend. The reason that you can watch XArt with your girlfriend is because the videos, well, first of all, both the guys and the girls are extremely good looking, which helps when you know, you're trying to get a girl to watch porn. But more importantly, the, the porn is shot like a movie. Like, wow, they are using some amazing cameras and some really awesome lighting. And the, they always shoot them in these like ridiculously exotic locales. Like, this is not like, oh, we're just going to bring this girl into this hotel room and then this dude with a big cock is just going to give it to her. It's not like that. It's like, you really believe, and who, I don't know these people, man. They might be real couples because they fuck like real people. Um, except the girls are just ridiculously hot. I don't understand. But yeah, I mean, if you guys have any, um, <laughs> Cass, aka Cooler, says this is lame porn. <laughs> not violent enough, not misogynistic enough for for this guy. Um, but yeah, uh, I really like. I mean, the, you know, even the music is good. It's not like it's not like porno music. It's not like bow wow, wow. It's not like that. Um, but yeah, hey, whatever. You guys want me to uncensor the chat? I, dude, I don't give a fuck. Nah, I'm just kidding. My mom's probably watching or something. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So, anyways. Uh, I, I want to see more, more porn like that. You know, more porn that's just shot on like really nice cameras, really good lighting and exotic locales, which is the hottest girls imaginable. Um... And I really would like to get into the porn business. Not myself, you know, not me, like, you know, on camera. I just mean on the business side, like content production. Because, you know, what I don't see a lot of people in the porn industry in, uh, doing, and not like I know, it's not, I know like two people in porn. Um, so it's not like I know everybody, but... What I don't see a lot of is girls, well, or porn people doing their own private live streams on their sites. I can't quite figure it out, but I'm going to assume that it's a technical hurdle. For example, there are so many people out there that have their own porn sites that are password protected because there are content management systems with which you can set it up easily and then you just kind of fill in the blanks. You upload your videos, you, you put the, um, you upload the videos, you upload the pictures, the photo sets and everything and it's all behind the uh, paywall, excuse me, it's all behind the paywall. So from my perspective, coming from a streaming background, I'm like, dude, I can set this up, it's so easy. I know how to set up private streams that we could put behind a password protected wall. And sure, we could do this in the fighting game community. But then you guys would just be mad. I don't want to pay 4.95 
835 I don't want to pay any money to watch this match, Gutex. Fuck you. I want everything for free. So we don't do it. We don't do it. These matches, they just don't happen. Because why the fuck should they? Because there's no money, there's no incentive to do it. But in porn, I think you guys would be like, Urgh, yes, ah, shut up and take my money. <laughs> so, oh gosh. Anyways, if you guys know anybody in porn, feel free to tell them that I will personally help set up their new live stream on their password protected site that they already probably have, right? They gotta have it already. I know they do. So just let me help you, bro. Or homegirl, whatever. <laughs> Doesn't matter to me. I just wanna take what I know and do more things with it. EMP Adam Sessler says, yo, you know how to use CMSs, Gutex, or content management systems for the layman? Yes, of course, EMP Adam Sessler, of course I know how to use CMSs, bro. How do you think I got to where I'm at, man? The original Gutex.com was run on WordPress with the thesis framework as a theme. <sighs> I've used WordPress, I've used Joomla, I've used Drupal, I've set up Magento, I used it for a little bit. Uh, I've tried Squarespace and I've tried Ning. I've tried basically all the CMSs that there are to try. And the reason for this is because I have a strong technical background, man. At least, a, not a strong, but you know, a, a, a kind of like so-so technical background, you know, like I've been building websites since I was, uh, I was like 14, dude, like, were you guys on Angel Fire writing HTML code in Notepad? Or rather, BB Edit, because I was on a Mac Performa 575. Yo, I've been around the block, bro. Come on, man. Angel, dude, I don't give a fuck about no GeoCities. Angel Fire and Zoom with an X, which is now some sort of weird like money currency site. I've done it all. You guys think, some people think that a Gutex just showed up. Like I'm just some guy that like knows everybody. But the truth of the matter is, I actually know stuff, you know? There's stuff that goes on in here, man. I know the technical stuff. Why do you think I was able to take it this far with such a small crew. I've done literally, and here I am tooting my own horn, but I've done, with the exception of motion graphics, I've done literally every single part of Cross Counter myself at one point. Audio production, streaming, video production, video editing, just everything. Putting together the website, creating a, an, a podcast to put on iTunes, doing the digital distribution, using various CDNs. Dude, these are the things that I know how to do. So sometimes people ask like, well, what can I do, Gutex? Like, how did you get to be Gutex? It's like, bro, I've done so many things. A lot of the things on the technical side. So step up your technical game. You don't know how to use WordPress? You don't know how to set up WordPress or register a domain from scratch? Bro, get on it. Because what are you going to do? Send people to your Tumblr? Tell them to go to whatever, johnnydonuts.tumblr.com? Come on, man. Get with it. Oh, and that's the other thing, too. That's another reason why CrossCounter was so successful is because Mike also has a very strong production background. You guys know that Mike went to school for, um, for film? Was it TV or film? Some, something like that. Mike has this very strong background in video production as well. So between the two of us, man, like we're able to take care of everything. Mike could, <laughs> Mike could get up off the couch and get behind the camera and shoot the whole thing himself if he wanted to. That's how we do it, man. That's what you need to do when you first start out and you don't have like a crew of people helping you. 
you know? You don't have that when you first start out, unless you got like money or something, which is great. If you do, that's awesome. But if you're starting from scratch, you have to know how to do all these things yourself when you're first starting out, or at least have a, you know, like a very rudimentary knowledge of how to do these things. If you're trying to get something started in terms of, you know, content production or streaming or any of these things. <sighs> yes. Um, Hologram Gutex says, Hey Gutex, do you know SQL? No. I do not know server query language. You know why? Because WordPress takes care of most of that stuff. No, like I had to take a class on SQL Server when I was in college. And you know, that is one of those cl classes where I had to, going to that class actually did kind of help me a little bit in setting up like various CMSs such as WordPress because I actually kind of, you can, you know, SQL and SQL Server have basically the same uh, syntax. So it was easier for me to at least kind of have a basic rudimentary understanding of what was going on. Um, but I did, I was, I was pretty good with HTML, you know, like I used to write it in Notepad or BB Edit or whatever from scratch. And then, yeah, move on to front page and Dreamweaver, and then boom. Joomla, Drupal, WordPress, the whole bit. All that stuff, way better. I mean, you don't really need to know these things anymore, but hey, if you're trying to be on the coding side, yeah, dude, you gotta know PHP or Ruby on Rails or Python or one of these web-based programming languages. You know, I met a guy the other day that uh, said that he programs in C sharp, and I was like, who the hell, who the hell used C sharp from, to begin with? That's like crazy talk to me, but hey. Structured, ah, hey, hey Donic Treadmill says structured query language. Sorry, goes, goes to show how much I know about SQL. So there you go. Ali Carrick says, Gutex, is the fighting scene dying to games such as StarCraft and Dota? No. The fighting game scene is dying due to the lack of interesting things happening. I don't think that there are actually that many people. Well, hey, you know what? I do actually know a lot of players that dropped Street Fighter to go play League of Legends and Dota. Not so much StarCraft. I don't think you can just like jump into StarCraft from fighting games. That's for sure. Um, but yeah, maybe it is. Maybe we should just go ham on League of Legends and Dota and say, give us our players back. I miss you guys. Nah, not really. We, Southtown Arcade says, we need more WWE sports. Kappa, you are absolutely right. Art. So help us out. What can we do to make this more interesting? You know, like there's just not as much ego and not as much, you know, although I do see guys like Jeff the Hero or Hanzo Gonzo, and these guys, man, these guys are personalities. They just go nuts and they just go off. I just, I guess, I just don't see them do an, enough of that, but it's like we need guys like that to keep it interesting. Guys that are just a little kind of, kind of crazy. Malice XXX says, more rivalries. Yes. Yes, more rivalries. Like, you know, when I was playing Third Strike, there was like a very distinct rivalry between, between Family Fun Arcade over in Granada Hills and everywhere else because we were the best. Don't tell anybody, but we were the best. I promise you, we were the best, at least in America. And knowing that you were the best overall, I mean, I wasn't the best. But, you know, dudes like Pyro Lee and Amir and Vic Vance 
and Five Star, those guys were the best. I think that they would be like, yo, we're so good, we would send Gutex, and Gutex could beat your best player from insert, insert area here back in the day. I mean, with the exception of maybe, I think outside of Family Fun, it was Justin and Ricky that were like the best in the country. But other than that, everybody else was not. Oh, and Fubar Duck. Always, always a threat, Fubar Duck. Um, Everybody else just couldn't hold a candle. But, you know, and the other thing is, too, we were a lot younger. You know, like now, we're going to be in our late 20s, early 30s. And, you know, it's like you're not so young and angry. But, man, it, you know, if you you out there are, you know, 19, 20, 21, man, you got to channel that energy. Because when you're young, you're angry. And you're like, man, I got something to prove. I'm going to beat your ass and then laugh in your face, and then talk about it on YouTube, on my stream, or my YouTube channel afterwards. Ha 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 ha! Like, that's what I would be doing. Man, if I were like 20, 21 right now, I would be, I would be, I would kind of be doing, I guess, what Champ is doing with FGTV. I'd be playing all day, every day, streaming my ass off, talking shit, and when I beat people, I would be popping off. But now I'm old, and I, you know, I just, I just don't care, you know. But you have to channel your young male angst. EMP Trayvon Martin says, Gutex, why is Rennick so bad at Street Fighter 4? You know what? He's not bad at Street Fighter 4. He's just way better at third strike, so it makes him look like he's not that good. But you have to cut Rennick a break, you know, Rennick's my boy. He got onto the Street Fighter 4 train late, you know, like if he had jumped on. But you know, I think it's because Rennick always lived in the valley, like over by Family Fun. And up there, man, they didn't give a fuck about Street Fighter 4. That's why you don't see any third strike heads that were big in Third Strike in the Street Fighter 4 scene at all. I am the only exception that I can think of off the top of my head, at least from that area. Everybody else, Pyro Lee, Vic Benz, man, Five Star, they couldn't give a fuck about Street Fighter 4. So, you know, you can't, can't blame him really. It's just, you know, he was, he was late to the game. What can you do, man? What can you do? I don't know how old Champ is. I feel like I should know. I know it was his birthday, like, um, right before PAX. Happy birthday, Filipino Champ. Dude's got to be, like, 26, 27, something like that. Still got several strong, strong years of competition left in him, in him for sure. All right. 995, Gutex, he says, Gutex, do you think Filipino champ popping off is a bad look for Complexity? Clearly that's the look that Complexity wanted because they knew going into it how champ was, so I would say no. I mean, this is what you're paying for when you want Filipino champ on your team, right? Although, to be fair, I think champ has calmed down a lot since the beginning. Um, although, you know, now he has even more of a reason to pop off because he's the best. So, I actually think he should turn up the pop-offs, you know? Yeah. So, no, I don't think it's a bad look for complexity at all. I mean, hey, what could be a bad look about having the number one Marvel player in the world on your team? Take that, EG, right? Yeah. That's what I would say. Captain 19 Planet says, so Ryan, you mentioned a couple episodes ago about wanting to mold a young student into what cross counter needs. Why couldn't it just be a young mind ready for the molding? Uh, that's exactly what I'm saying, a young mind ready for the molding. But then at the same time, it's like, how do you train 
or how do you how do you teach somebody to carry on the cross counter name? I mean, myself, myself, Mike, Champ, Combofine. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I think when I think of guys like that, I mean, I think we all have a very distinctive look, a very distinctive personality, and a certain form of uh, like a vibe that we that we give off, right? How do you teach that to somebody? It's like, well, they have to have a little bit of that to begin with, and we could take that and kind of like grow it and, and massage the inside of their brains, you know, and kind of like infuse a little bit of, well, a lot of skill, some good looks, some talent, some ego, some fashion. Mm, yeah, All right, rocking the v-neck today, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's not really so much about training them to be Gutex and Mike Ross. It's more about training them to be worthy of carrying on the cross counter name. How right you are, says Gutex. This long into Street Fighter 4 and Marvel 3's lifespan. Do you think it's wise to try and get into these games seriously? If you love Street Fighter and Marvel 3, baby, the time is now. What are you gonna do? Wait for Street Fighter 5 to try to get good? You may be waiting a long time. What are you gonna do? Wait for Marvel 4? According to Capcom, that shit ain't never happening. We're gonna need another 10 years of this game before a generation of Marvel um, higher-ups or bigwigs or whatever is like, hey, you know, uh, you know what worked really well when I was coming up in the world? Marvel versus Capcom 3. Hey, do we still, hey, hey, can somebody get Capcom on the phone, please? Thank you. I mean, really, if you're gonna wait for that, you may be waiting until your fucking hands fall off, bro. So, if you don't think there's any future in these games, well, hey, I don't know. I mean, if you don't want to dedicate yourself to something that you feel has no future, well, I think Tekken Tag 2, Tekken Tag 2 has a pretty bright future. Uh, Persona, looking pretty good. Street Fighter, Street Fighter Cross Tekken, you know what I think? I think they're just going to make Street Fighter Cross Tekken. Too. And I think everybody's gonna end up going nuts when that shit comes out. Hopefully, maybe. <laughs> DOA5 looking good, unsafe from Mike2002 says, I, I don't know. I don't know. Blink Templar says, Gutex, ever been to an MLG? What did you think? I've only been to the MLG fighting arenas in New York. And those are cool. You know, they had me out there to host. I always love going to New York, man. Any excuse to go to New York is a great one. I have so many friends in New York, man. And every time I go to New York, it's always a different adventure. I'm always in a different part of the city that I've never been before. I love it, man. New York is a great place, great place to visit. But I definitely wouldn't, definitely wouldn't want to live there. It's so exhausting when you come back. <sighs> you guys know, hey, you guys know they're gonna do cross Tekken 2, right? I mean, come on. Seriously, they're just gonna leave it like this? I don't know. I don't know. Oh. Hold on, text message real quick. Please excuse me. Yes. So, am I? You send says, am I hyped for Tekken Cross Street Fighter? Hmm. Let me think about that. Nah. Not so much. Junior Mafia 643 says, 
Who is your idol? That's a great question. When I think of idols, I think of dudes like Jay-Z or Donald Trump, guys who really just took what they're doing to the highest and highest and highest of levels. And not only took it to the highest levels, but also expanded into other areas. I mean, you look at somebody like Jay-Z. Well, Jay-Z isn't just a rapper. You know, he did that. Now, he's part owner of the Brooklyn Nets, and he redesigned their logo? Whoa, who did that? Who does that? You know, he's got his new website. I forget what it's called. He's got a new music festival. Man, that's awesome. And he's got, what, like a, a vodka or some, some kind of alcohol company. And he's got uh, the clothing line and the record label. Man, Jay-Z, teach me the ways, bro. Let me help you with live streaming or something. Please help me. Donald Trump, dude, master of commercial real estate? Oh my God, do deals get any bigger than huge ass buildings in major metropolitan cities? I mean, not that I can see, right? Just dealing with like one-on-one -on -one people like that as opposed to like, oh, we're Microsoft and we're gonna buy all this other company. I mean, really, like commercial real estate is about as big as it gets when you're dealing on like a one-to-one -one basis, right? and then uh, expands into stuff like, you guys know, right? Donald Trump runs the Miss Universe pageant? Oh my God, am I in the wrong business or what? How, how do I do more of that? How do I showcase more of beautiful, how do I showcase more beautiful women to the world? What a service this man does for, for planet earth right and you know of course he did the apprentice that was so interesting man i was glued to the apprentice at the beginning and then it got kind of kind of wacky and kind of shitty but the first like three or four seasons man that shit had me hooked um but yeah man how do we take the idea of a miss universe pageant and bring it to like the the nerd culture i'm the best I can think of is cosplay contests that are like streamed or something, but oh man, if anybody has ideas for that, I would love to hear them. I'm not talking, you guys, see, this is why we can't have nice things. I say bring hot girls to geek nerd culture and you guys say miss fgc this is why we can't have nice things guys gosh you guys you guys are killing me i would like cosplay contests i would like streamed con cosplay contests with judges ow i'll be a judge i know a guy um and prize money but how, how, do we, how do we do it, man? I'm not in the cosplay game. Who's in the cosplay game? How do we help with this? Let me know. Hmm. Oh, here we go. Suroboro says, cosplay contest plus my earlier porn idea equals profit? Now you're thinking. We need a cosplay contest. This is what we do. Cosplay contest, streamed live on the interwebs for free. And then what we do is in between, you know, the girl, the contestants, we run ads, we say, hey, go to, you know, cosplaycontest.com, sign up for the mailing list. And then what we do is we say, hey, top three cosplay contest. How would you like an extra $5,000 to do a little, you know, adult action in your, uh, you know, the, the costume that, you know, you won for. How, how about that? What do, you, what do you think about that? And maybe they'll be like, I'm down. Let's see, what are these guys saying? Ah, Vampy. Vampy bit me. She would definitely be some. I don't. I don't know her though. So if somebody could give me like a legitimate introduction, I don't mean a fucking Twitter introduction because I'm pretty sure we've we talked back and forth on Twitter before. But 
a legitimate introduction to any of these people and we can just let me just let me help with the marketing you girl you cosplay girls you guys do what you do best you know the scene i don't know the scene just let me help with the marketing and the promotion hmm hmm The Unlimited Genius says, Gutex, what are your life goals? That's a very good question. My life goals include building a stream of passive income so that I can just live a life of luxury in exotic places and travel around the world and make the world better through things like streamed beauty pageants or live streaming porn or big exciting exhibition matches between top players and fighting games or you know putting together like awesome live music streams that people can enjoy can enjoy from around the world so they they can pay 9.95 to you know I can hear some of you people out there like just I, I can hear you guys writing these ideas down trying to steal my shit. Good luck, bro. Good luck. Hey, you could try to steal it or you could just say, hey, Gutex, I'll help you with that. Let me help. I can do this part of it. And I'll say, awesome. Now we're on the same team. Murdoing says, Gutex, please make a porn with the girls that cosplay as the Tekken girls. You get beyond Donald Trump level on, on that service to humanity. I agree. You're right. I don't want to come off like a creeper, though. You know, the best way to get girls to do porn, I think, is to have it, have it seem like it was their idea. Right? Dem Clock says, Gutex, the Mars Volta, or at the drive-in? Obviously, the Mars Volta. Now that at the drive-in is in, you know I saw at the drive-in at Coachella, I never seen Omar look so bored. This dude is just up here playing his guitar. He's just like, instead of like going nuts when he was playing for the Mars Volta. Come on, you guys are crazy. Let Two John says, is Cross Counter looking for any interns? If you're in the LA area and you want to help me do some shit, hit me up. Gutex at crosscounter.tv. <sighs> Chai Towns Freest says, Gutex, where did you go to school and did you finish your degree? I went to Cal Poly Pomona and got a degree in computer information systems. How could something so expensive be so worthless? Shout out to Kyle Kinane for that one. Uh, you guys are a lot of fun. You guys are just out of control now. You send what says, why didn't you get a degree in game design instead? What the fuck would I do with a degree in game design? What, make a video game? There are plenty of people out there making plenty of, plenty of video games. I, I don't need any of that. What am I gonna do with that? EMP Pelican X says, so you did nothing with your degree? This is basically what I'm doing with it, guys. I hate to break it to you. Ah, yes, wait, oh, there was a good one. Beansy2183 says, how about linking up with some comedians or comedy clubs for live streams? I would love to, man. I love going to comedy clubs. I, I love watching stand-up, it's so funny to me. Uh, I just don't really know anybody in that world, so if you know anybody, let me know. <laughs> EMP Adam Sessler says, see Gutex, you should have learned about databases. Yes, if I would have learned about databases, trust me, you and I would not be sitting here talking to each other right now, right? I would be in front of a computer uh, writing insert statements to put, you know, customers into 
databases for something, 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 and probably making a lot of money and hating my life. Instead, I get to do this and hate my life just a little bit less every day. Thank you guys for listening. The Odd Squad says, what do I need to stream casuals at my local arcade? Great question. You need permission of the arcade, and then you need the hardware. Check out the streaming tutorial that we did the other day. Capturing um, from an arcade cabinet is very similar. I'm pretty sure you can get HDMI out of any of Street Fighter 4, and you just plug it into the computer, man. Ali Carrick says, Gutex, would you be interested in the Dota 2 game, like promoting and marketing for it? I have the insights and knowledge of the gaming community, etc. Send me an email, tell me what you got. Captain 19 Planet says, Gutex, what happened with that hamburger you love? Sorry, you said if you said it in an early episode, I haven't caught up yet. I haven't heard, you know, I was supposed to follow up today. I'm gonna follow up tomorrow with an email and a phone call. I'm gonna be like, look, motherfuckers. If you don't want to do this, I'm just going to go to the competing burger chain and I'm just going to do this for them and fuck you guys. How about that? How about that, guys? How about fuck you? You send says, Gutex, have you ever considered streaming Street Fighter 4 and letting people donate to play against you? Yes, except I don't think, I think the time for that has come and gone. And when I wanted to do that, I didn't have the bandwidth for it because I had um, Fisher Price internet. So, yeah. Super Moose 201 says Gutex, how do you go out and have a good time if you don't have $2 in your bank account? That's a great question, Super Moose. The best thing to do if you have no cash is to make yourself valuable in other ways. Hey, if you're the guy with all the connects, it doesn't matter how much money you have. What matters is that you have friends everywhere that you go because you are experienced in the art of giving and receiving social capital. What is social capital? Social capital is the influence that you have to make somebody do something for nothing, for, for, for zero dollars. Right? That is your social capital. For example, if uh, I say to, uh, if I say, hey, Paul from Broken Tear, can you retweet this link of Gutox number seven? Paul will say, yes, sure, Ryan, no problem. Boom, hit the button. Why? Because over the years, I've built up a lot of social capital with him such that something like that is no problem. So the way that you do this is by doing favors for people back and forth. You're giving and receiving. It comes back to what we were talking about earlier. So when you first meet somebody, you don't ask them for things. You try to rack your brain to think, what can you do for them? What can I do for you to help you so that in the future, you will help me, although you can't have that sort of um, mentality where you're, just, where you're just doing things for the sake of getting other things back. It's not about that. It's just about giving and trusting the universe to give back to you in another situation, another scenario at some point down the line. So social capital, I mean, in some ways is more important than the actual amount of like dollars and cents that you have in your uh, in your bank account because it can get you out of situations or into situations that money cannot for example i went to i went to blizzcon not last year but the year before and a good friend of mine that works there was like, hey Ryan, do you want to go to BlizzCon? I got a badge for you. I'll put you on the list. And I was like, bro, you are the best. Thank you. Thank you for taking care of me. 
because I'd taken care of him in various ways before. Not like that, you fucking perverts. Um, so I had the great fortune of being able to go downstairs underneath the convention center and get my badge there. It was like a media badge or something. So I didn't have to wait in some big, ridiculous line and do any of that. I just, um, I just walked in and got my badge. And then afterwards, you know, I'm sitting there and I run into a friend who I know from college. And he's like, oh, hey, what's up, man? Gosh, I just got in. It was such a long line. And he's sitting there with his, you know, Blizzard, BlizzCon ba uh, bag and all this other stuff. And I'm like, I'm like thinking in my head, like, dude, that sucks. Because this guy makes way more money than me. We went to the same school and everything. Makes really good money. You know, he's like a professional, got a job and everything. But what was, what was the advantage here, right? Money couldn't buy him less time in line in that situation. But because of my social capital that I had with my friend, that was more valuable. Later on, he was like, hey, uh, do you know any parties going on? And I was not in a position to bring people to the party that I was at because the party that I was at um, was a party with esports elite, we'll call them. And I'm not the guy that invites people to parties that aren't mine where I don't know if it's cool or not, especially if they're not directly involved in the scene. So regardless of the fact that this guy makes way more money than me, when it came to BlizzCon, I had more social capital, which meant that I was able to wait in, I was able to skip the line and not have to pay for a badge and not have to do any of that, as well as hang out with some of the esports elite in a private party that unfortunately would not have been appropriate for me to invite him to. So just because you have just because you have a lot of money doesn't mean that doesn't mean that that is more valuable than social capital. <laughs> John Kranz brings me back to life and says, that sounds kind of pathetic, Gutex. Well, I'm sorry you feel that way, and I'm sorry you didn't get to go to BlizzCon, bro. EMP Adam Sessler says, yo, Gutex. If a girl couldn't make time for me over a long weekend, like last weekend, because of Labor Day, does that mean she's not into you? Possibly. Possibly. It's not so much about the live... Um, it's not so much about the, li uh, the long weekend as much as it is about her consistently not making time for you. For example, hey, maybe she was really busy this weekend, bro. Like, what, what can you do? You know, she's a busy girl. She's got plenty of dudes saying, hey, hey, what are you doing this weekend? Hey, Labor Day, want to hang out? Want to hang out? Want to hang out? Uh, so it doesn't, I wouldn't really say like, oh, she didn't hang out over Labor Day weekend. She's not into you. But, you know, if she didn't want to hang out over the long weekend and then she didn't want to hang out this week, and then she didn't want to hang out next week, then yeah, you know, she's probably not into you. Like, if, if you try to make plans and she flakes once, try to make plans and she flakes twice, like, dude, like, she's not, I don't think it's happening. Knucklesoft says, Gutex, any chance you know when the Ask Dr. Zero, Ask Dr. Sub-Zero show is coming back? Hopefully soon. I hit up John yesterday. He never hit me back. 
I messaged him. <laughs> you know, another thing that could be said is, hey, you know, sometimes you have to be persistent. I mean, don't try too hard. Don't always ask her out when you're texting her, but, you know, like, you can, you can put in some time. Sometimes it takes weeks or months, you know. I have a friend, and, you know, he was telling me about this girl that um, he had to basically pursue, like, for, they hung out once, and then he had to basically, like, pursue her off and on, for weeks, months, like through text messages here and there until they finally met up again and they hit it off just as well as the first time. Junior Mafia 643 says, do you ever listen to video game music when you're not playing a video game? Why would I do that? Crazy talk. Crazy talk. Villain Avenger says, Gutex, what degree do you recommend for someone who wants to get into esports production? I recommend the degree, <laughs> I recommend going to the school of hard knocks and hard hustling, bro. There is no degree for esports production. There's barely even degrees for production that's relevant nowadays, in my opinion. I can think of one person that I know in particular on a first name basis who I was once very close with that has gotten so far in esports production and I'm pretty sure this person never went to college? Definitely did not graduate from college but through this person's hard work, determination, excellent networking skills and raw talent uh, through um, uh, being good with uh, graphics as well as on the technical side this person has climbed the ranks of esports production to as far as this person can, as far as they want it to go. It's very, very impressive. So I would say don't worry about the degree, focus on getting involved in esports and building your network. East SRK says, Gutex, do you believe you need to go to college? Was the biggest lie of our generation? No, I believe it is the biggest lie of our generation and the next generation and probably the previous generation. But some people are only barely starting to, you know, kind of scratch the surface and kind of see that it's all a lie. Why are you going to spend all this money to go to college and come out of it looking for a job? What? What? Why did you want to get a job in the first place? So you could just be a slave? Last time I checked, the government was taking 30 to 40 percent out of your income off the top before you even saw any of it. Why would you want to do that? Why wouldn't you want to... Okay. Business 101. And I didn't come up with this. This is from straight from the pages of Rich Dad Poor Dad. You guys can go look at I mean, I talk about this book sometimes, but this is straight from it. Okay. The difference between being employed and owning a business, the most critical part is this. When you have, uh, when you have a job, you pay your taxes. Your taxes are taken out of your paycheck before it even gets to you. So whatever your tax rate is, 20, 30, 40%, doesn't matter. If you started with $100, now you only have $70. So you earned 100, but you only got to keep 70 of it. When you run a business, you only pay taxes on your profit at the end of the year. For example, if you have $100 and your expenses were, let's say, $50 for the year because you spend $50 on your products or whatever. You're left with $50 in profit. You're taxed on that $50, not on the $100 that you made in revenue, meaning that if your tax rate at $50 was 30%, that you would pay, what, let's see, 30, half, you would pay $15 in taxes 
meaning that instead of paying $30 in taxes at um, the 30% rate, if you were an employee, you would only pay 15% as a business owner. And that's at the end of the year. So you can still do what you want with the money in the meantime, such as in reinvest it into your business, rather than having that money go straight to the government. This is the advantage of owning a business. That is why you do not want to have a job. It's not called Finance 101. This is just tax law. This is like straight business. So there you go. <laughs> Look, I'm not an attorney. I'm just saying, what? <laughs> I'm just saying that, read it in the book, man. That's how it goes. That's how it goes. The difference between being taxed as a business owner and being taxed as an employee. Go look it up. D3, Diodor says, so Ryan, I'm 20, own my own house, work from home, have a car, and pretty all right set of clothes, but I can't go out to clubs to meet the ladies. What should I do? Also, I live in Maine and everything closes at eight o'clock here. LOL, good question. Why can't you go out? I don't understand. You work from home, you own your own house, and you own a pretty good set of clothes. Why can't you go out? But let's say, let's say that you didn't like going out, or there was nothing, nowhere to go, um, nowhere to go anyways. What would you, what would you do? Well, first of all, dude, if you were, if you were doing that well for yourself, hey, congratulations, being 20, own your own house, hey, good shit, bro. Why not continue working from home in another location that isn't Maine and you just rent out your house or sell your house and parlay that into a condo or some sort of other residency in another location where you could go out all the time? How about that? I, don't, I mean, dude, I've been... I've been to some awful places in the country. And it's like, man, I don't know how you guys live here. Oh, okay, Go Buy Gabe says, you need to be 21 to go to bars, LMFAO. Um, how about this? Why don't you go to 18 and over clubs? Not an 18 year old, not an 18 and over club around you? Start your own, baller. <laughs> hey, if you're that balling out of control, you should be able to either start something of your own that's 18 and over, find somebody with an ID that looks for, looks like you, or buy a fake ID. Come on, man, get creative. How'd you get this house, bro? You work from home. You're so smart. Why do I got to tell you these things, man? Come on. I'm just playing. I'm sure you're a smart guy. Diodore. Oh, oh. Oh, there we go. <sighs> yeah, MWS0611 says, obtain alcohol anyway and have a house party. Hey, there's an idea. Put your house to work, bro. Charge people $5 to come in, have a couple of kegs, everybody has a good time. You're the man, you ain't even gotta leave the house. Come on, man, let's get creative. Vegaman004 says, name your top five places you traveled. <sighs> Gosh, okay. In no particular order, really. But um, 
Singapore, Japan, Canada, New York, St. Martin, yeah. You could also put Fiji in there. Yeah, those have been the best places. I love, I love going to Japan. I love going to Canada. I love going to, although, yeah, although Calgary is fucking freezing. <laughs> yes. Sugar Shane says, I'm planning on going to Japan next time, next summer. What are some cool things to do there? Should be there in like two weeks. Eat all the ramen at all the different places. I love the food in Japan, man. Um, gosh, what have I done in Japan? I went to Kobe. That was, a, that was very cool. I was there for my cousin's wedding. That was cool. Um, gosh, you know, I really haven't done a whole lot in Japan, to be perfectly honest, aside from eat ramen and go to the arcades. So I'm not really the best... Yeah, I'm not really the best to, to tell you about that. EMP Gutegs wants to know, have you ever been to Vancouver? Yes. Vancouver is like Canada's LA. It's like, when you think about it, it's like geographically in the same place as LA is, just in Canada. So it's right by the water. You, you have like so many people that live there, except every, and there's actually a pretty cool um, bar and club scene. Excuse me. And... Man, I love, I love going to Vancouver, man. Canada's LA, but yet this is the this is the the kicker. Everybody is still Canadian, so they're still super nice. It's ridiculous. I don't know if you guys know any Canadians in real life, but Canadians have got to be well, maybe Australians. Australians and Canadians have got to be the nicest fucking people on the planet, man. I always, I always feel so. Ah, uh, like these guys are S tier in niceness, you know? Um, but yeah. Hmm. Oh, I think I need to refresh. Uh, but yeah, I may be going to Vancouver soon, maybe? But probably not for any fighting game stuff. Huh. Drew UK says, come to Amsterdam, Gutex. I would love nothing more than to go to Amsterdam. I don't understand why somehow my fighting game travels just haven't taken me to, to Europe or South America. I just... I just don't understand. I would love nothing more than to go to Spain or Italy or Romania even. Because I think that's, that's, what, that's, that's the one with the hot gymnast team, right? The Romanians? Um, Ibiza. Oh, wow. Um, Brazil. Brazil. Yeah. Brazil. I've never been to East uh, Canada, though. <sighs> ah, yes, the gaming writer. I would love to come back to Singapore. Let me know when you can put me on a plane, and I will be on it. Some Cody player says, hey, Gutex, I'm in college and I've been trying to get fit and stay in shape for a while now. I've developed my own exercise routine and I go to the gym. I recently have started eating less and less shitty food other than the obvious garbage, like soda, chips, pizza, etc. What types of food should I be avo avoiding and what should I be eating more of? I'm not a doctor nor a fitness trainer, but from my very limited understanding, you need to be eating more fruits and vegetables and um, fresh fruits and vegetables and more protein, healthy protein, like chicken and fish, and not fry it, but, you know, grill it or whatever. Um, what I do normally is I wake up, work out, spend like an hour, hour and 15 minutes down there, 
come back upstairs and make a green smoothie. The green smoothie consists of kale, spinach, strawberries, and some other type of fruit, a cup of almond milk, because there's no need to be eating dairy if it's not for something important, like a really good burger or pizza, and ice, and I put it in the blender, I drink it, and then I feel really good. And then uh, oatmeal, yeah, I'll, I'll make some uh, still cut oats, those are delicious, with uh, powdered honey and a little bit of chopped up fruit, delicious and then oh man I went to Costco and I bought organic chicken this organic chicken is sometimes so tender that you can cut it with a fork ridiculous um, so dinner usually consists of chicken and Brussels sprouts uh, baked Brussels sprouts and brown rice that's what I like to eat and I think it works pretty well Logistics says, Gutex, how would I earn passive income from doing graphic design? It seems everything is just based off a one-time commission. That is a great question. I was having this exact same conversation with a friend of mine who's a photographer the other day, and he was talking about how he was trying to read the four-hour work week, and he's like, Ryan, this shit means nothing to me. How does a photographer make any passive income? And what I told him was, look, this is, just because photography is your trade doesn't mean you can't make passive income from it. Off the top of my head, the surest, most simplest way, straightforward, to make money from photography, passive income, is to sell stock photos. And then when I really started to think about it, we also came up with the idea of, of uh, Photoshop, or the idea of Photoshop Actions came up. And he was talking about selling Photoshop actions, and I was like, perfect. What could be easier to sell on the internet than a file that was less than one megabyte to sell, to send, and cost you, and cost them like 10, 20, 30, 40 dollars? Perfect. So for graphic design, there's plenty of sites such as, uh, I think, Graphic River? GraphicRiver.net? Yes. GraphicRiver.net is a great place to get started. Go here and see what people are buying. And then, whoops, see what people are buying and look and see how you can fill the gaps. What are these people buying? You know, what, what can you design that would be useful to these people? And you can build up a portfolio of passive income just by designing things that people that are on this site would go for. You know, I mean, that's... Dom5 says, Gutax, how do I get into the workforce if every job wants experience? The best way to get in and get experience is to do an internship. You don't, even if, you don't have to, even if you're not like officially part of an internship program, if you are going in to companies that you want to work for and say, hey, look, I'm in college, I want to get experience, I just want to help, you don't have to pay me, you can pay me in pizza or beer or free shit or hookups or whatever, it doesn't matter. They will be like, hey, come right over here and start doing this particular job that nobody wants to do. And through doing that over time, you will develop a strong relationship with the company and then you will have experience and you can say, I interned at this company from this period to this period and now I want to work for you. And they'll be like, hey, great, you got experience now, good work. Hmm. 
Sir Peeper says, Gutex, I'm 23, never had a job, and I'm about to graduate college. Is this bad? It could be bad if you're trying to get a job after college, so maybe what you have to do between now and then is build relationships and start interning so that you at least have something going on while you're still in school so that you can try to build your network of people before you graduate. All right, guys. I believe we've reached the end of Goo Talks Lucky Number Seven. Thank you guys for joining me today. It was a lot of fun chatting it up with you guys. Tomorrow, tomorrow, we should have a brand new Goo Talks Number Eight, week number two of Goo Talks, and we should have more. Well, hopefully we're streaming on a different uh, different piece of software. So thank you guys for watching. I'm going to replay what we got uh, in just a second. So sit tight and enjoy the replay. Thanks for watching, guys. Follow our uh, Cross Counter TV here on Twitch. Hit the little heart button. If you want to get notified next time I go live, follow me on Twitter at Gutex. Send me an email, Gutex at crosscounter.tv. Thanks for watching, guys.